Congressman Mark Green, good to see you, sir. Good to see you. Thank Anyone? you. Thank uh, you are we making too much out of this delay, you think? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, no, you're not making too much out of it. And yeah, it's a it's a huge problem. I mean, this whole notion that um, at a time of our choosing and, you know, trying to gain the sort of upper hand in the dialogue. I mean, we need to launch missiles. Why don't you think we have? I don't know. I can't explain it. I mean, it, it's as if you, know, you you served in Iraq for a long sure, time. Yeah. You, you in went Karbala. up. And, yeah, you yeah. Been, you've, you've <laughs> been, been there. there. Done that. Right, and you and you and you've gone up against these same militias. Yeah. You were there. Uh, are they? And I'm wondering here, in terms of what this strike package looks like, and we think about how robust it could be. How good are these militias at these moments of moving their their men, their sensitive equipment, on and on out of the places we would have hit? Well, they're very good at uh, concealment. You know, it took us how many years to get Osama bin Laden? Uh, how many months to get Saddam Hussein. I mean, it, this is a challenge to us, but our intel operations are very good in the area. Um, but honestly, it should be almost immediate. It really should be immediate. Counter battery fire, you sense where the missiles or the drones come from and you destroy where they, they launch from. That's a no brainer. That's the beginning, not, that, the, that's, not the end. Exactly. I, I'm thinking though, just sort of long, you know, big picture in terms of what's going on. And I know you have a lot of constituents who are over uh, sees serving. This is what Secretary Austin said uh, in the middle, if you will, this is October 31st, what he said in the middle of the 160 so strikes by Iranian militias on U.S. forces. Take a listen. We've been clear, the president's been clear, and I, and I have been clear, uh, Vice Chair, that uh, if that, if this doesn't stop, then we will respond. I'm wondering if Iran even believes this anymore. Oh, no, uh, not, not at all. I mean, look, when they came into office, they took the Houthis off the terrorist watch list. They made a $6 billion deal for a few hostages. They uh, began the JCPOA talks. I mean, they want to be friends with Iran. They don't know a good guy from a bad guy. I keep saying that. Honestly, in this whole uh, interchange, we've got to stop striking at the tail of the snake and start hitting the head of the snake. You, we talk about the head of the state. We'll put back up uh, the Iranian militias. Uh, this was referred to by one of our viewers, I thought, very well, as the Middle East Mafia, uh, and then run by the Ayatollah in Tehran. I think you'd agree with that yeah. uh, assessment. But I, I think about this. In terms of going after actual leadership and taking them out, would that make a difference? Sure, it would make a difference for a time, uh, depending on which level of the leadership you go after. But we know very well there is a seed in Iran planted for a revolution. I mean, there are folks there who want regime change. And if we strike in the right places, we might start something that could bring freedom to the Iranian people. And that would be a very or good at least thing. Make the, or at least make the Ayatollah so scared sure, that he's sure. sort of less likely to be adventuresome around Absolutely. the world. Look, we saw, we saw the uh, Obama administration turn their back on the Green Revolution. That's right. Uh, we've seen the Biden administration turn their back uh, on the hijab re revolution that tried to start with the women in the streets um, in Iran. Help us understand what you think is going on with Lloyd Austin. This is a guy, I think you served either with him or under him. Uh, uh, he was actually a battalion commander when I was a rifle company commander in the same brigade in the 82nd Airborne Division. Okay, so this is a soldier soldier. Do you think he really believes all this as he's sitting up there and saying it? I can't really say. You know, when I knew him when he was a young infantry warrior. Um, he's been a politician for a very long time. And trust me, that has uh, an effect on you. Um, and he's in an administration where they're very clearly different. Uh, they don't want to fight back. Uh, so I, I, I don't know. I can't really say. If we give the administration their very best argument, which is that the Israeli-Palestinian fight is at the heart of the problems in the Middle East, and if they manage that effectively, we'll have a segment later on how they're trying to do that, but if they manage that effectively, and as we heard from Lloyd Austin today, his number one priority is non-escalation, then the Iranians are willing to sit back and play nice with everybody because they want to be part of the international community. I do not believe that the Israeli-Palestinian issue is the heart of it in, in the Middle East. I think the Shia-Sunni divide is uh, a big concern. I think KSA has a huge fear of Iran. Um, KSA is the Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. This is much bigger than just Israel. I mean, Iran wants to dominate. If you look at their uh, constitution, it actually says the Islamic uh, Republic will rule the world. So I think it's far bigger than just uh, 
Israel and Palestine. Thanks for Good having to see, me. Sir. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.